Welcome back, Second Swingers, and welcome to my house. Uh, this is Buzz, another episode of What the Buzz is All About. Um, questions keep coming in. Um, this one's an interesting one. Um, you know, how do you deal with the pressures of competitive golf? I have found through time that as much as I loved my college experience, I really prefer playing more for myself. Um, I always felt added pressure from the team, not that they were putting it on me, they weren't, but that I was putting it on myself, uh, that I had to perform for the other guys on my team and for my coach and for my school. So after college, I turned pro and moved to Florida, like all good professionals did back in the day. Almost all the pressure that I was feeling was all self-imposed, um, and I was not good about it either. I was somebody who imposed a whole lot of extra pressure on themselves. Um, definitely a detriment overall to my to my career, I would say. I was very, very hard on myself. And this is me being the world's biggest hypocrite because I now talk about how you have to let things go. These are all the things that my parents were telling me all along, and I wouldn't listen. Too hard-headed. I had this idea that because this was my living, this was how I was, you know, supporting myself, you know, I had to play at the highest level. And when I didn't play well, I beat myself up. It's a bad way to go, man. Bad way to go. Where the pressure really starts to come on is when you are now on a tour that is nationally televised. <laughs> so you get to an event and you see scaffolding and you see ropes everywhere and you realize that this is different. You know, this is, this is going to be different. It didn't take terribly long for me to get pretty comfortable with the idea of televised events and, you know, being beamed across the planet. Um, it's golf. And that's the biggest thing that we have to realize and remember, in, no matter what we're doing in, in the golf world, is it's just golf. So uh, for those that do play competitive golf and... Um, you know, are aspiring to play under more and more competitive situations, just remember it's just golf. You know, all the work that you've done, all the places that you've played, all the shots that you've hit, all that stuff is going into building what you want it to be. And it's just golf. You've hit the shots before. Your body knows what to do. The biggest thing we have to do is keep our brains out of the way. Um, that is definitely easier said than done. Uh, if anybody knows anything about that, it's definitely me battling the yips with the driver. Yeah, so we just got to focus on the task at hand. Um, pretty much any situation that you're in, you've probably already seen. You probably have practiced it. You probably understand it. You just gotta just gotta stick with the things that you know and go out and have fun. The biggest thing I can tell you is if you're enjoying yourself, if you're having fun, everything's gonna come a whole lot easier. My last two years as a mini tour player before I got my nationwide card, I had an incredible, incredible run. And it was, for me, it was all about where's the ball, where's the hole, and how do I want to make this ball go to the hole? And it was so much fun. When it becomes work and it starts to drag you down, you got to step away for a while. Um, it's important to take breaks. It's important to take time away and do other things. Um, you know, your mental golf golf health, health is such an important thing. Um, you know, golf isn't really that taxing if we think about it. Um, 
you know, physically playing 18 holes a day isn't really going to beat the body up that much. But what it does is it really gets in our heads. I'm not saying that there aren't hilly golf courses out there that'll that'll kick you in the butt a little bit. There are, absolutely. But for the most part, our biggest challenges come between the years. And if we can learn to primarily stay out of our own way and let the things that we know how to do happen, um, we'll be a whole lot better off. You know, go out and enjoy yourself. If you get in a position to win, fall back on the things that you know. The guys on tour, they stick with their, their routines. It's one thing they can absolutely count on as they as they go about their business. They face the same adrenaline rushes and the same amped up feeling that we feel. They just try their best to stick with their routines. You know, for, for our purposes here uh, and what I can tell you about playing competitively, do your best, stay out of your own way. You know, have fun, enjoy the process. If we get too focused on results, that's when bad things are going to happen. Um, definitely that's when bad things are going to happen. That's when bad things started to happen for me. Uh, another quick little story here. Uh, in 2006, I was fully exempt on the nationwide tour. I had been conditional in 2005 and played my way to fully exempt. I went down to Panama first week of the year and finished second. It was my best finish. It was the biggest check I ever made, and it was the worst thing that ever happened. <laughs> total, total contradiction. But what I mean by that was I finished my round and got my check, and I was like, yes, this is the year. This is the year I'm going to get to the big tour. And I obsessed about the money list. I had such a such a good first week, and I saw myself right up there at the top of the money list. And all I did all season long was watch myself drop spots on the money list as I didn't play well, and I didn't play well, and I didn't play well. And it was in 2006 that I lost the ability to focus on the process. All the years that 2002 to 2004, where I had such an incredible run on the on the the mini tours and won a ton of times and made you know really really good money and had such a great time, you know it was all about there's the ball, how do I want to make it go to the target? And I totally lost that, completely lost that. And I was focusing on the money list and my results. And as soon as that happened, I started to play worse and worse and worse. And then I played more to try and make up for it. And I tried to practice harder. And I practiced longer. And I burned myself out. So, you know, that was that was the beginning of the downfall. I finished second. What worse could possibly happen? Well, it doesn't make any sense. But that's kind of how it ended up being for me. So, anyway, we'll get into more stories as we go. Um, if you're a tournament player, have fun. Best thing you can possibly do. Stay in the moment. Stick to the process. Mm -hmm.